September 26, 2022, Monday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job, and that there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil? But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it for nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock are spread over the land. But now, put forth your hand and touch anything that he has, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand upon his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabaeans carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and their shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate upon the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful of God. The Word of the Lord The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. From you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him, because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord Not solely because of the shadow he cast, but I've always been a fan of the person they called the Great One, Jackie Gleason. 
Now, you may remember him as Ralph Cramden on The Honeymooners, a Catholic man whose humor was often self-deprecating, often illustrating in his comedy how he could not control his life and he was not the king of his castle at all. Jesus reminds the disciples of a line that Jackie Gleason would have liked. The greatest among you is the least. Yes, what makes us great collectively and individually is not accomplishments or accolades, not control of authority. No, what makes us great is where we are the least, unsure and broken and insecure, and approach the Lord for healing, mercy, and guidance. There are a number of times in the Gospels where Jesus reminds the apostles and others that it's not going to ever be about access or special treatment. It's going to be about service and love. I think that's why so many folks, including myself, will say we get more than we give when we volunteer time or talent or treasure to a good cause. Serving from our want, from our treasure, is the source of what deep happiness is about. It's amazing. And yet it's challenging because on some level, we all want to be the greatest and the kings and queens of our castles. The scriptures remind us it cannot be that way with you. The greatest is the one who serves and gives from the heart. The end of the prayer of St. Francis serves as a good reminder. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we receive eternal life.